into the little garden. Its beams spread across the grass and touched on the front door of Hector Hedgehog's home. It was a cosy little home underneath a red maple tree and Hector had lived there all his life. The moonbeams touched his nose and he stirred, stretched his little stubby legs and yawned. He felt hungry. It was time to get some food. So he unfurled his self from the pile of leaves that he'd been sleeping in and peeked out of the door. His nose sniffed the air and he could smell that it had been raining. He didn't mind the rain, it didn't bother him at all. He moved over to the bowls of food and water that seemed to always be there for him. He didn't know how they'd got there, but he was glad they were there. He would find his self a juicy worm or something later on, but for now he was happy with what he had. He looked up at the sky and there weren't very many clouds tonight, so he could see the garden quite clearly. He moved around, touching some of the flowers and smelling them. He liked flowers. He didn't know if that was okay, but he liked them. Some of the rabbits in the garden had moved and he had a look to see where they were. They never spoke to him, which was rather rude, but he was used to that. As he moved around the garden, he saw there were some new rabbits some black and white ones this time. He wondered where they'd come from. He poked them with his nose, but they didn't say anything either. It was very strange that they didn't speak to him. He was rather lonely. His mum had left him a long time ago, but he was happy in his garden and his little home. He felt, though, that tonight he ought to do something different. He had noticed some holes in the garden under the fencing and he wondered what was on the other side. Tonight he was going to be brave and he was going to go through that hole and have a look and see what was on the other side. He had peeked before but hadn't been brave enough to go through. But tonight he was going to do it. He was convinced there was something good on the other side. He went steadily towards the hole under the fence and slowly but carefully crawled under. He found himself in a strange garden with very tall spiky plants There weren't plants like that in his garden. They looked quite harmful, so he stayed well clear of them. And while he was sniffing around, he found a juicy worm to eat. And that was very nice. He enjoyed it. He heard a noise to his left and looked around and saw a large shape. He didn't know what it was, but it was moving slowly towards him, crouching, its large green eyes staring at him. He couldn't see it very well. It was hidden in the shadows, but he could hear it breathing. It looked quite big and he was scared, so he rolled himself into a tight little ball, his little spines keeping him from harm. Whatever it was came up to him, smelt him, purred, tapped him and squealed and ran away. He was glad, very relieved and waited for a while before he uncurled himself. He didn't know what kind of creature that was, but he didn't want to meet it again 
And so he scurried back into his own garden and safety.